What's up everyone, Jared Leon here with Pack-A-Punch Traders. Uh, just wanna make a little trade recap for this week. Um, I know I've been a little MIA the past few months. Um, just moved out and got a new place. Uh, been having a lot of internet problems. Um, it's just been a big pain in the ass. But um, just took the past couple months off trading. And honestly, it was, it was, it was really well needed. And um, I feel refreshed and and kind of just ready to get back at it and start attacking the markets again. Um, so this week kind of played out pretty well, uh, first week of the new year. And um, uh, just a handful of trades this week, um, a couple stupid ones, and um, you know a lot of little mistakes that I've made. And so I just kind of want to dive into it and uh, go through my trades and you know talk about what I did right and what I did wrong and what I want to do to improve uh, going into next week. So. We'll start with Oric O R I C. Um, you see, it kind of had a run like about a couple weeks ago, uh, and it's just been holding up. I traded it this day here, looking for a breakout, um, but never should have traded it. Uh, just the volume was super low, and um, I should have just stayed away. So we'll go into the daily here. Traded it this day, uh, super small size. Uh, especially for my first week back trading small size and um, you know just trying to get my confidence back a little bit get comfortable uh, took a small position 620 ended up stopping out here at six and uh, it was like a 10 11 dollar loss on that um, so not bad I knew it was just really light volume and I wanted to just see um, some volume start volume start coming in and, and to see if we could really start picking up um, but just the volume was super low. I took kind of a shot, a shot in the dark at it. And, uh, one of those trades were, you know, I could have just avoided. So for this, just super low volume, should have just avoided it. Let's see. And then for trade number two, these are all in order by the way. So that was, that was uh, Tuesday, I believe. And then we got E L Y S. I'm pretty sure I traded it this day here. This is just a bounce play. So super low volume, but um, it was failing to break down. And once we started to break and confirm that uh, that high of day, I started to take a position. I took some um, 28.5 right in here and actually sold it. Sold it at, sold it, sold it at 31. Uh, let me see. Yeah, sold it at 31 from a 28.5. Just took a little over 8%. And then I just didn't want to, I wasn't comfortable swinging it into after hours. Um, I just wanted to lock it in really quick. And then just moments later, and this is what happens sometimes, you get that move after hours, and it actually happened to me today. Um, and you know, it is what it is. It gave a really crazy move after hours. And and I, you know, I'm fine with missing out on that move just because the volume was super light. And um, you know, that's, that's really hard to predict that it's gonna do something like that like that after hours. So I just took the small eight, eight it was like 8.7%, so. Just took that, locked it in um, as a balance play. And then the next day, it does give a quick little opportunity there, but I didn't play it. Then after that, I traded Kala. So Kala was a good one. Had a really nice run, um, put in a red day. And then it just it failed to break down and, and it started to reverse and I was able to play the bounce. So I actually took a couple positions in here and uh, ended up cutting it for about break even. It was a super small loss. Um, I just wanted to be, I, I just wasn't super confident in it because I did expect it to fade a little bit more. 
And when I saw it spike this morning, um, hold VWAP, I thought we could get a move and it just took a little bit longer, but it held red green really well. Red green was 32. And uh, it held that really well, held VWAP. And finally some volume came in and we perked through high of day. As soon as we started to perk through and I saw the volume coming in, I slapped it um, a little bit of a chase, 3450. Um, and then I sold it at, I believe 37. Yeah, 37, only 50 shares, just took 7%. But this was a case where, you know, I wanted the, um, the, high, the, the high threes, like 38, 37, 39. Um, I'm sorry, I, I know I sold at 37, but uh, I was expecting like, you know, high 30s, low 40s, somewhere around there because I knew in the mid 40s where it, has, where it had resistance. Um, and I wanted to just take that, that quick snipe, but I just sold it way too soon. And it's been a, you know, it's been a problem for me this week is, my entries are actually really good, but my exits are just terrible. I'm selling way too soon and I definitely need to just be a little bit more patient with my sales. Um, and then I was watching it for a breakout as well. I saw this holding up really well and um, just decided not to take it. Just, I don't know why. Um, I just, I sat on my hands and just kind of watched it go without me and uh, definitely regretted that for sure. Um, but nonetheless, this, this bounce play was really nice. And all this was, was, uh, you know, shorts piling in and it just doesn't meet their expectations. And when it starts to make higher lows and hold, you know, key levels and, um, starts to break through high of day, shorts get squeezed, you know, and then you got dip buyers like me coming in, trying to buy the dip and, uh, that's just led to the short squeeze. And that's all this is really. So, um, Definitely still have this on watch though for another multi-day bounce. Now it's put in a couple red days. I'd like to see it crack below, you know, this 28 level um, and fade. You know, get another solid red day down into the low 20s, and I'll look for for a bounce play again. Um, so we'll see how this sets up. But after Cala, uh, we had ATNF. A lot of bounce plays. And a, and a few breakouts. So it's actually been a really good week because, you know, my bread and butter. So I've been enjoying that a lot. Um, nice run up. First red day. And then you get the reversal. And it doesn't have to be, you know, we, it, it could be two, three, four red days. Uh, but after it sets in its first red day is when I can start looking for that reversal. So let me just go back here. And this had a really nice breakout as well. So I took the quick move. Um, I actually bought the dip here, had a really nice position at 454. And um, I should have added on the high of day break because that's really technically you want to buy um, these bounces is when, you know, let it spike a little bit in the morning and then, you know, let it consolidate for at least five minutes. And once it starts to break that morning high, that's the key trigger to buy. And you're looking for a 10 to 30% move. So I, I should have added on the high of day break and got some size, decided not to, and sold that at 501. So I actually took 10% there, finally taking a 10% move. Um, I know because I've been selling at like seven, eight percent on all my trades, which is just ridiculous. But then later you get the breakout. And so it kind of started ramping right up to the breakout. I wasn't buying it here. I really wanted to see it go up and, and break out and confirm. Um, but I was really excited about this because it, it reminded me just like uh, Kala, and I definitely did not want to miss out on this breakout. And this is another mistake I made is I got a little bit too much size in this one. For me, at least, I was a little more, a little uncomfortable and um, I didn't want to give back my morning gains from, from, from ATNF when I traded the bounce. Um, and I just played this very emotionally and sold it way too soon. Um, and I was just really, really frustrated with myself. So I let it break out dipped here. I wanted to take, I took, started taking like 50 shares. Um, I think I added another 50 shares in here in the, in the six twenties, just in case it didn't pull down all the way. I wanted to have at least, a, at least a piece of it in there. Um, once we got this crack, I started adding more, here in the low sixes, added some more in the low sixes, had an average of 615. And uh, as soon as we start to perk up here, I sold. 
I don't know, you know, well, I do know why. It's just because of emotions and uh, fear of taking a loss and um, just impatient, just stupidity and really frustrated with myself because I knew, I knew just be patient, wait, you know, five more minutes. This will reach you. This will touch, hit your goals. Just be patient. And, um, you know, two minutes later, it broke through high of day. And then less than 15 minutes later, it was touching seven. And that was my goal was high sixes, low sevens. Um, cause there was a resistance level here in the low sevens. So really frustrated with, with that and how, how I handled that. Um, and I think it's just because I had a little bit too much size and I need to stick with, you know, what I'm comfortable with and get my confidence back. And, um, once I do that and I'm consistent and confident, I can start sizing in a little bit more right now. I, you know, I see these plays and I, I want to trade them and I want to, you know, bank on them so bad. And I just, I, I can't help myself, but sometimes size up and how I, how I sized into this was perfect. Um, I just need to be a little bit more patient with myself and just trust the pattern a little bit more and, and you know, not, not worry about taking a loss. Um, if it doesn't work out. So that was that, um, really annoying play. I should have, you know, done, played, uh, done really well on that, but instead I, I think I made like a hundred bucks on it all together. Um, then the last trade, which I didn't think I was going to trade today, but I ended up making a trade later on. And you know, same same thing here. Multi-day balance. You get the run up, get the fade, and then you look for that reversal. So, it kind of reminds me of um, ELYS with how it made that move after hours. Once it broke through high of day, I had a really good position here. Um, I put in my, I just put in. Once it started to spike up and we started to pull back a little bit, I put in an order at 31. This candle here got me filled and it really never even came back to 31. Um, I saw it kind of topping out here and decided to just sell it for some reason. I took 8% and just decided to just sell it because why? I didn't want to take a loss on a Friday to end my week um, after I've been trading so well, even though it hasn't been that well Um well, I guess it's it's been good. It's been a good trading week. It's just my sales. I need to do better with my sales. So I was just frustrated. Um, just kind of took it just so I can have a win to finish off the week. And then literally like 10 minutes later, we burst through. And, uh, you know, I could have taken my 10, 15% into this move here. And I would have been perfectly happy because I can care less about missing this rip to 58. Um, I don't really like to swing these, to hold these into after hours or overnight. So I know since it gave me the move here, I most likely would have not held for, for this because I just wasn't, wouldn't be expecting it. Um, so just, just patience, patience, letting trusting the pattern, letting it play out and uh, not worrying about taking a loss. And um, hopefully I can have a better week next week. Still a solid week. I'm green. I, I, my, my, I'll post my stats tomorrow, but I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm like a 70% win rate. I'm like five for seven on the week. And um, I made like 375 bucks. My biggest win was uh, like 120 and my biggest loss was $11. So just that fact of that there alone of, um, you know, my biggest win being 120 bucks and my, my biggest loss being $11. It's pretty good and I'm, I'm very happy with that. So um, I really just want to build off of that now and uh, keep trading smart and uh, keeping, you know, keeping my entries how I like them and, and where they should be, um, you know, close to key levels and, and into dips into support and then just giving it a little bit more patience and, um, you know, trusting the pattern. And I just don't want to be selling, you know, for seven, eight, nine percent and then watching it rip another 10, 15% without me. So 
just need to have more trust in the pattern. And I think that'll come with um, a little bit of time, you know, trading again and getting my confidence back. And uh, once I can prove that I'm consistent, um, I'll be able to size in a little bit. Another thing is just, you know, keeping my position sizes small and comfortable for now um, to build my confidence and then uh, slowly, slowly start sizing up. So I really want to have a good year this year. Um, you know, I'm feeling good. I want to crush it. And um, I'm going to start, you know, making these videos again. I'm going to try to do them daily. Uh, if I make a trade, if not, I for sure going to do it once a week um, and just give updates. I'll be on, on Twitter a lot too. Um, you know, fatty pass, uh, posts everything like watch this and stuff on, on, his, on, uh, pack a punch traders, Twitter. And then I have my own personal, tr uh, Twitter at Jared Leon. Um, and I, I post a lot of stuff of my own there. So if you want to, you know, stock updates and, and, and t ticker alerts and stuff like that and things I'm watching, you can check out my Twitter as well. So hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I'm excited to be back. I hope we have a great year. Uh, I'm, I'm really ex super excited. And um, yeah, hope you guys uh, enjoyed. Hope you guys are learning and um, getting better every day like, like I'm trying to. And like I said, you know, let's have a let's have a killer year. We're all capable of doing it. And um, just about just about putting in the time and effort. And, you know, we're going to do it. We're going to get there. So appreciate you all. Hope you guys have a great day and uh, even a better weekend. And uh, I'll see you guys Monday. And we'll kick it off all over again. Later, guys.